On September 16, 22-year-old Masa Amini died after being detained for allegedly violating Iran's laws requiring women to wear a headscarf. Iranian authorities say she died of illness, but her family said she fell into a coma after being mistreated by police. Protests sparked by her death have since rallied groups across Iran's society, from ethnic minorities to school children and even oil workers. According to human rights groups, clashes with police have killed more than 200 people. But despite the crackdowns and widespread internet shutdowns, videos have continued to emerge, showing how unrest has spread beyond women's rights to a movement that is calling for an end to strict theocratic rule. These demonstrations have now turned into the most broadly supported movement in Iran in more than four decades. A day after her death, Amini's funeral took place in her hometown of Sakhiz. The ceremony quickly turned into a protest against the country's morality police. Mourners took off their headscarves in defiance of the very rules Amini was accused of breaching. Amini was Kurdish Iranian, part of an ethnic minority that has long accused the government of discrimination and neglect. After a week of unrest, authorities launched strikes at Kurdish militant groups across the border in Iraq, saying they were inciting the protests, although there were no visible separatist slogans in the protests that followed Amini's death. And the demonstrations against Iran's strict Islamic dress code took on a new form. On September 20th, a woman in the eastern city of Kerman removed her headscarf and cut her hair in a video that was widely shared online. It triggered a wave of support from around the world, with celebrities and women imitating her gesture and posting videos to social media. That's roughly when the government restricted access to the internet in large parts of the country. Access to platforms like Instagram and WhatsApp that have been used to organize rallies was blocked. The internet cuts drew criticism from businesses. Tehran's Chamber of Commerce estimated the cost of $24 billion for industries, including IT services. But despite the restrictions, the protesters' message was taken up by students across the country. In one case, children at an all-girls school took off their scarves and chased away a man from the premises, throwing bottles and chanting, Shameless. As more crowds took to the streets in large numbers, the government used tear gas and live ammunition to disperse demonstrations. A particularly deadly incident broke out in the southeast, home to another ethnic minority, the Baluch. On September 30th, protesters were seen walking towards a police station before being fired upon. Local human rights groups say more than 90 people were killed in what protesters dubbed Bloody Friday. The government blamed the violence on a local militant group that has denied any role in the protests. And then demonstrations spread to one of the most critical sectors of Iran's economy, oil. In early October, workers went on strike at a number of refineries, blocking roads with stones and chanting slogans in support of other protests, although the government claimed these strikes weren't related to Amini's death. These strikes highlight another big problem for the Islamic Republic, a struggling economy due to U.S. sanctions and a number of other issues in the country. And they have a symbolic weight in Iran. It was strikes at oil refineries in 1978, much bigger ones than today, that helped bring down the Shah of Iran, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, in the revolution that established the current Islamic Republic. In recent years, Iran's leaders have faced several protest movements, but have shown no sign of backing down, and today is no different. They claim the demonstrations are being orchestrated by foreign enemies, and hundreds of protesters have been brought to trial. But discontent has continued to emerge across society, disrupting normal life. From this prison that was engulfed by fire after a clash between detainees and prison guards to shopkeepers striking across the country, and a major target of the demonstrations continues to be one of the foundations of the theocratic state, its supreme leader, Ali Khamenei.